Hi, welcome to another session of the Potter's Roundtable from Washington Street Studios. I'm Phil Bernberg. Today's topic is tips for making professional looking pottery. Just about every potter or pottery student can look at other people's pots and recognize professional quality work. But what is it about the work that makes it look professional? In this discussion today, we'll talk about some things that every potter can do to make their, the, improve the appearance of their work or the presentation of their work. Welcome to the Potter's Roundtable, a monthly podcast where we share our passion for the ceramic arts and a collection of topics specific to potters. Remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Enjoy the show. Tips for making professional looking pottery. As we all know, art is very subjective. What is good art? What is bad art? And, and art can be controversial, and even the standards for quote-unquote art change with time. So if today's violator of all the good known principles of art is tomorrow's daring art pioneer. So what do you do about that? Well, what we're going to do is ignore that. And so, for example, this is an illustration of some of the, the this is taken from a recent issue of Ceramics Monthly, and it shows just the, some, a little bit of the variety of, of contemporary ceramics work that's being produced. And the point here is that you may not like the work, you may not like a piece of work, but generally most potters can look at the work and at least recognize that it's professional quality, it's well made. So we're not gonna go into all the details of sort of the formal traditional ideas about design elements and principles of design. That's a completely separate topic. But there are some basic guidelines that we can apply to our own work to improve the appearance of their work. And that's what we're going to talk about. So we'll skip some of the controversial aspects. We can think about the work that we make really in two ways. There's the aesthetic aspects, that means the design and the composition of the work, the appearance of the work, and then there are the technical aspects, how the craftsmanship, how well made is it. So let's start with the craftsmanship. Let's start with the technical aspects. Well, to be a professional level artist really means having high standards. First of all, you need, you need to be a good craftsman and have a fair degree of mastery of the technical aspects before you can really produce good work. So basically, you need to have good technique to convey an idea. And if you think about it, every single piece that you make really is an idea. You're trying to say something with that. Maybe it's, maybe it's just a coffee mug and you're trying to say, here's an attractive mug that functions well. So you're trying to say something with each work. So you need to have good technique to produce the work to make it convey the idea that you're trying to convey. And one of the bottom lines to this is you want no technical defects. You can't produce professional work and have cracks and glaze defects and warping or warped pieces. So they have, that's up, up front, that has to go. You can't tolerate those. But there's some other, there's some other tips and things that we can do. What a lot of this really comes down to is paying attention to details. That's one of the most important messages, I guess, of today is pay attention to all the details. For example, Avoid what we call near misses or accidents. A near miss is a term meaning when you're trying to do something with a pot or with any work of art and you don't quite do it, but you sort of suggest it. So for example, if you want a line on the pot to be a straight line and you're not really completely successful at making it straight, it looks like it's straight, but not quite straight, that's a near miss. If, if you want the line to be straight, make it perfectly straight. If you want it to, it to be sort of a little more casual and loose, make it loose, but make it obvious that there's a difference, that you, didn't tr you don't want it to suggest that, hey, I tried to make it straight and I wasn't very successful at it, okay? So try to avoid that. And the point here also is, try to show evidence of your intentions. If you are trying to do something, make sure that the work clearly conveys what you're trying to do. Along with this, another thought is, have a uniform treatment of all the parts of a piece. So in other words, when, when I look at a piece, it could be a coffee, it could be functional, or it could be non-functional, it doesn't matter, but make it look as if you paid equal attention to all the parts of the piece. So that, for instance, when you, let's say you have a sculptural piece and some of the edges are rounded and some of the edges are sharp, make it look like either that was intentional and you wanted to show that contrast, or round them all to the same degree or finish them all to the same degree so they look the same, so that again, it doesn't look like you just forgot to round part of it. You intended it to look the way it did. 
So finishing is very important. And this is one of those things that I think a lot of potters and people that I've known sort of forget. They may enjoy the throwing or the assembly part of making a piece, and then by the time they get to the end of the piece, they're sort of tired of it or they're done. They've, they've, they've accomplished most of what they wanted to, so they sort of move quickly through the finishing, and you want to try to avoid that. One of the points here is that every single step in the process of making pottery or any art is important, and you don't want to neglect one for the others. You may have a preference for one stage. You may like one aspect of it better than the others, but you still don't want to neglect those other aspects because it's visible in the finished work. So you can look at the work and you see, well, I, like, I love the color of this piece, but look, it still has sharp edges. That's, that's not professional work. So you want consistent quality. One of the other things, it's a tiny little detail, but one of the other things I've noticed is you want a professional looking signature or sign on your pots. You don't want to just sign them bill in a quick scrawl or something on the bottom. Put something that looks professional that 10 years from now you'll be proud to, to, to say that that's the way you signed your pots. And something also that will endure like that. Something that, you know, that you'll want to keep that same signature. Along, as long as, as well as talking about the, the, the signature, keep in mind that the bottom of a pot is just as important as the top. And people, if you've ever noticed that people that are experienced with looking at pottery, one of the first thing they do, especially functional work, but one of the first things they do is they turn it over and look at the bottom to see how much attention was paid to the bottom. And so if the top of the pot is beautiful and the bottom shows evidence of just kind of haste or sort of a rush to get through it, again, that's not indicative of professional quality work. So this means, for instance, you want a well-trimmed foot ring if the pot has a, has a foot ring. Um, and one of, the other, one of the other aspects that I see fairly commonly is you want a fairly definite line where the glaze ends. And so for instance, and I've seen this, I've seen this especially true on slab pieces, like slab plate, soft slab plates and soft slab bowls. And let's say this is an oval platter, and I'm now looking at the bottom of it now, and there really aren't any feet. So the profile would just look like this maybe. And there aren't, there aren't feet or a foot ring or anything on it. And so the glaze, the glaze, the, the top surface is glazed and the bottom, so this is all glazed and the glaze just sort of wraps around the rim and ends. And so another good indication would be is don't just have the glaze sort of end where it, end, where it wants to end. Make a definite end to it, make a line. Either draw a line on the pot or cut a groove or, or wax the pot so that you get a strong definite end, ending line to the glaze, especially where there's no other feature on the bottom. It's a featureless bottom and you, don't, and you just have sort of a random end to the glaze line. Create a, a definitive end line to the glaze. And again, what that shows is intention. It shows you weren't just letting it happen, you intended, you intended to control the way the, the glaze was going to appear, okay? And this can be done, now a lot of times on a thrown pot, for instance, if you're throwing a bowl and you, and you have a foot ring, then this, it provides a logical place for the glaze to end, for example, right there, for instance, where the, where the bowl transitions from the, the, the wall of the bowl to the foot ring. That provides a nice clear line. But on a lot of these slab pieces or hand-built pieces, you don't have that same definitive line, and so it's nice to create one. Make it look like you, you paid enough attention to care about where that glaze ends and how the glaze looks. Um, for functional work, another, another aspect is you want the pots to feel, to feel good in the hand. Functional work and a lot of pottery, as everybody knows, People instinctively want to pick it up and handle it, and because it, a lot of it is functional. So you want it, when somebody picks up a piece, you want it to feel good in the hands. You don't want, you don't want a coffee mug to feel bottom heavy, or you don't want a bowl to feel bottom heavy. So that's part of it is just the balance of the piece, if it's a piece that's intended to be handled. You want, you want it to feel good. I think another aspect, and this sort of, this sort of comes into all of these things we're talking about is, what you really would like to show is, and one thing that's evident, I think, in most professional work is self-confidence. You can see the confidence and the experience of the artist in the work. So, for instance, brush strokes, and this is a good example, a brush stroke can, have, can look sort of hesitant and, and not confident, or it can be a smooth, a smooth curved brush stroke that just looks like it was done with confidence. The same thing applies to trimming cuts is that you can see when someone has trimmed a bowl or a or, or, or piece 
and they're confident in their trimming technique. The cuts even are confident and they're, they're definitive cuts. So you don't want sort of hesitation evidence in the things. And the, the, the answer to that is how do you get there? Practice is if you're going to do brushwork on your pots, practice your brushwork so that you're confident and you can get a, a brush stroke that looks confident and looks like that it was done with ease. It may not have been done with ease, but make it look like it was done easily and confidently. And this comes from practice. I mentioned before also that all the steps in the process of making pottery or any work of art are important. And one of the main steps that I think I've seen people sort of neglect is glazing. People like, maybe they like throwing on the wheel, or they like assembling hand-built pots, or they like the trimming aspect of it. And by the time they get through all these stages, they've done most of the, what they consider the enjoyable parts, and the glazing, they kind of go, ah, oh, that's not so much fun. And they t tend to rush through the glazing. So I've seen a lot of pots that are really well-designed, and they're well-constructed and well-made, and then, but it's obvious that they rushed through the glazing. The glazing was rushed and they didn't care that much about it. So to me, it really, it really decreases the value of the whole piece and it, and it diminishes the whole appearance of the piece because you can see that the glaze was rushed, that the same care wasn't put into the glazing. So that's important. Another, another thing is if you actually are a, a, a production potter at any level and you actually produce a line of work, let's say you produce functional work and so you produce bowls and plates and dinnerware sets and so forth, one thing that's important is to have the same consistent technical quality in all of the pieces. So that you don't, let's say maybe you, you enjoy making pitchers but you're not so fond of making plates. Well make sure in spite of that that your plates are equally well made as your pitchers so that somebody isn't looking over your line of work and they say, yeah, great pitchers, but not so great plates. So again, that consistency, that's part of the attention to detail that, that professional potters and people that make professional looking work are aware of. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And consider becoming a patron of our channel. Visit www.patreon.com and search for the Potter's Roundtable. Any amount you give will support the creation of a digital library of educational videos and podcasts to support artists, potters, and educators now and into the future. If you would like more information about our membership studio, classes, events, and multimedia productions at Washington Street Studios, visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the design. Those are some of the technical aspects. Let's talk about some of the design aspects. And even though I mentioned we were going to avoid some of these sort of more formal or rigid rules of, of like principles of design and the elements of design, there still are a few that, that relate to quality that we can talk about. And one of the ideas is the idea of the concept of unity versus variety. And what that means is you want to have enough things happening in your work so that the work is interesting to look at, okay? So on the one hand, you want to have, you want to have a variety of features. Maybe it's handles on a piece, or maybe it's the surface design, something to make the piece interesting, but not so much that you've got too much going on. So that you, you really want, it's a balance between enough going on to make it interesting and enough variety, and yet enough so that the piece sort of all holds together. You don't have too many things going on at once. And along with that, there's the principle of harmony. And what this means is that all the parts of a piece, all the aspects, work together. No one part jumps out at you as, as dominating the work. And this is, this is particularly apparent with making teapots. This is why teapots actually, they, maybe they sound simple, but it's quite a challenge to make a good teapot because you have all the separate components. You have the handle on the body, you have the spout, you have the lid, maybe you have a knob on the lid, you have the foot ring on the body, and so all these different components. And so when you're making a good teapot, just even from a design point of view, you want all these, pots, all these parts to fit together in a balance. You don't want the, the, the appearance of the teapot, for instance, to be dominated by a massive handle or a spout that looks out of proportion or the curve of the spout doesn't fit the curve of the handle and the curve of the pot so that it jumps out at you when you look at it. It looks sort of out of place. And so you want, you want all the parts to be sort of working in harmony, as they say, so that they, they work together to produce this unified whole piece. One of the, and, and important, talking about, about when, now we're talking about design here, but so one of the, one of the, we talked about some of the technical aspects, but for functional work also, 
it's kind of ironic, but that you have to say that functional work needs to be functional. So that you need a balance between your creative aspects, your, your idea to put maybe a really creative looking novel handle or a weird looking spout. If it's gonna be functional, it still has to work. So you have to keep a balance between your, your trying to express your creativity and come up with something novel and still have it work. So handles still need to be comfortable and they still need to be placed in order to balance the piece. I've seen pitches, for example, let's say a tall pitcher, this is just, and the handle is down here. Well, it may look, and maybe, you know, maybe there's some feature up here with the spout so that the spout kind of balances the handle in the visual appearance, but it very, it's not, it's not gonna work, it's not functional, and when you try to pour it, it's not gonna be a comfortable place to hold it. So the handles still, they still have to work. The spouts have to, have to pour in a controlled way without dripping. Maybe you wanna make a corkscrew spout or some other weird design, but it still has to work, okay, if it's gonna be functional. The lip of a piece on something like a mug or a tumbler or something has to be comfortable enough, despite, in spite of the, the, the shape, it still has to be comfortable enough so that when you put it to lips, it's comfortable for drinking. And it also has to be thick enough and strong enough from a practical point of view so that when you're washing it, if you bump it, you don't, you don't break the lip, you don't chip it. So it has to be, this, there, again, there has to be a balance between function and, and design. For non-functional work, we're not worried so much about, we're not, we're not considered about function because the function is, is looking at it basically and maybe conveying a story or telling a story or, or making a point. But the, the, the thing that you can ask yourself there is, what are you trying to convey with a piece of non-functional work, whether it's sculpture or a mural or whatever, tiles on a wall, what are you trying to convey with it? And ask yourself, does it convey what you want it to, to do? Does it say what you want it to say? If it's not, then it's not successful. And if you can't see what you're trying to have it say, then no one else will either. Okay, originality. This is, a, this is really useful, especially after, if you've been making things for a while, is develop your own style. If you can, develop your own preferences, or, in the, or in, as an arty term, develop your own voice, okay? And what this means is, if you can, it's really useful to have a recognizable style that becomes your brand. So that when somebody looks at the pot, they can say, I know who made that. And that's, it's been, again, if you're, if, you're in this, if you're in this to sell your work and produce a line of work, that's going to help you sell your work and get your work to be recognizable and also be professional. There's a certain recognizable style to your work that people can, can learn to like and appreciate. Another, another idea is less is more. There's an old saying about gilding the lily, and what that means is overdoing it with decoration. And so one of the points here is you may have a lot of creative ideas about design um, for, for work. Don't try to put them all in one piece of work. I have some, I have some pots that I collected years ago where people, they're, they're small, like tea bowls, and there are like 15 different features on the tea bowl. There are stains and slips and carving and ingobe and, and all in the one pot, and it, it, it overdoes it. You, you don't know what to look at when you look at the piece. So less is more, basically. And if you have a lot of ideas, then spread them out over a different, and try them, spread them out over a different work, but don't try to cram them all into one work, sort of to, you know, to impress people with what you know. Neatness, there's another important point. There's a thin line between creating a casual or a loose or an unself-conscious style and sloppiness. And this is a really hard thing to convey because, for instance, in, in, in Asia for a long time where there were these sort of unknown craftsmen producing just humble folk pottery for everyday use, and it's become, it became highly respected, especially, for instance, with respect to the tea, bo the tea ceremony. The, the Japanese in particular love these sort of this humble pottery that was produced. It wasn't signed, it was produced strictly functional and they liked the simplicity of it. And there are a number of artists today that are trying to reproduce that simplicity and it's really hard to do. You have to practice, I think, very hard to produce something that looks casual and simple and unself-conscious. And the problem is if you force it too much, it can look contrived and if you're not careful how you do it, it can just look sloppy. So that's a, that's a difficult, it's actually very difficult, I think, to make loose looking, more casual work. You almost have to learn how to make it formal and then back off from that so that it doesn't look contrived or it doesn't look sloppy. And the same way I mentioned before that 
if you're producing a line of work, you want consistent technical quality in your work. You also want consistent design quality in your work. So that if you have well-designed pitchers and well-designed mugs, you want well-designed bowls. Again, that creates unity within your whole line of work. And people can look across all the different aspects of your work and see that you've given the same attention to all the different parts of your work. And again, that's a sign of a professional attitude about producing your work. Another, another, another aspect of this is of design is that show that you have considered all the design possibilities for a piece. In other words, when you're constructing a piece, let's say it's a, it's a mug, and there, you can look at it as sort of as a challenge or a question in, the, in, in planning the design. Like, okay, where's the best place to put the handle, for example? Simple question. Where's the best place to put it? Well, there might, there might be a number of alternative solutions to that, and so what you want to show with your work is that you've considered all those alternatives and you've, and you've, for your particular design, you've picked what you believe is the best solution. So don't just pick necessarily the first place to put your handle, is consider the alternatives. And the way you do this is work in series. So that if you're producing a series of mugs and you like the basic body shape, but you're not, and maybe you've even picked the handle shape, but you're not sure the actual best location is that excuse me, try all of them. Work in series and try a series where you, where you move the handle around and try different placements to see what is the best. Because one of the things I found, if you're experienced at looking at pottery and you, and you pick up a piece of pottery and you look at it, you can look at sometimes and say, you know, this would be a lot better if the handle was a half an inch lower. And people, again, people that are experienced at looking at pottery or art in general, it's fairly common to be able to make these kind of judgments about pieces, be able to look at them. So you, don't, you want people to look at your piece and immediately recognize that that's a perfect location for the handle, or that's a perfect style spout that goes with the rest of that. And that goes with thinking about it, and again, it comes also from working in series, where you, you, you personally try these different, these different aspects. Well, how do you get there? How do you actually get to the goal of making professional looking pots? Well, one of the things, of course, is practice your techniques. The other thing also is think about the work, plan about it, don't just make it, put some thought into it so that the thought that you've put into it will come through in the final work. I mentioned already work in series. This is a great way to develop an idea. If you have an idea for a piece is work in series and make several of them and keep making them and, and so that you can see the piece evolve till you get to the point where you're, you're fully satisfied with all the aspects of the work. This again, this goes back to the, the idea I mentioned up front is pay attention to all the details. There's no unimportant part of your work. If you sell your work, I think an important point is use realistic pricing. Show that you know the value of the work and you know the, the, the level or the value of the local market. To me, there's nothing, there's nothing that says amateur about work quite like unrealistic pricing or crazy pricing. If I look at a piece of work that has some absurd price on it, to me, it may be well made, but that's still, that's still I see a big amateur stamp in terms of the artist. And finally, don't sell, even in your rush to maybe go commercial or pay your bills, don't sell below standard work, but constantly work to raise your standards. Okay, well, thank you very much for visiting with us today. I hope some of this information was useful. Um, if you'd like to hear it again, you can, you can listen to our podcast version of this presentation. Just search for the Potter's Roundtable um, on your favorite podcast platform. And if you enjoyed the presentation, please like it and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends. This helps our videos get noticed and gets found on YouTube. Also, check out our website, www.hfclay.com. We want to particularly thank our patrons for supporting our educational efforts, such as these videos. If you'd like to help us, consider becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com and look for the Potter's Roundtable. Thank you for visiting with us today. The Potter's Roundtable is brought to you by Washington Street Studios and our patrons. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe, give us a five-star review, and tell your friends. If you want to learn more about Washington Street Studios and shared studio memberships, please visit our website at www.hfclay.com. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time on the Potter's Roundtable.